Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back, or welcome if you're new here. I thought that it would be fun to do a little night routine video for you guys so you get to see what my routine is. I'll show you guys skincare, all the goods. Um, but I thought it would be really fun to make this a little bit different than the typical night routine and make it more of like a sleepover. So I wanted you guys to be more a part of it, like you would be if we were just... BFFs having a little sleepover. So I had you guys ask me some questions on Instagram, so I'll get to answering those later on in the video. Um, but I thought that that would be a fun way to like incorporate you guys. And plus, I know when I go to sleepovers, definitely like once the night starts to wind down, you just talk about the most random stuff. You're so tired at that point that you just talk about the most random stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to do like a little Q&A portion of the video. If you would like to be involved in these types of Q&As, ask me the questions. I said asks. <laughs> ask me the questions. Go follow me on Instagram at Josie Versloys. Kind of tough to spell, but if you guys clicked on the video, you know my name. So um, anyway, right now, I just finished a walk with my sisters, so I'm going to make dinner, and I'm just going to make some chicken and asparagus and um, something super simple. So, we're going to do that, and then I'll just take you guys along what I do tonight. It's about 5 o'clock, so it's going to take a while for the chicken to cook. So, we're going to do that, and then we'll see what else we do. we'll take a shower and I'll show you guys some of the stuff I use and explain all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to eat dinner and then I'll be right back. Okay so in the shower I'll show you what I use. I want to preface this by saying the only things that I really consistently use and only use those products are my face products. As far as like hair, body wash, that kind of stuff, I kind of switch it up. I get something new every single time I buy something new so this is just what I'm using at the moment I like all the stuff that I have I'll probably buy something different whenever I get a new set of stuff so anyway we'll get into it first off for the hair I am currently using the Nexus clean and pure shampoo it's the Protein Fusion. I like it. It's great. It's fine. Like I said, I'll probably get something new. Same with conditioner. And then as far as for my hair... Oh, gosh. This is leaking water. As far as the fact that I have, like, dyed my hair, I haven't bleached it, but I did, like balayage it with blonde dye if that makes sense as opposed to bleach because my hair is kind of thin and um, fine so we felt like it, if we bleached that much of my hair it would probably damage it pretty bad um, so to help keep it kind of blonde I use this like repair treatment it's like a mask kind of like a hair mask and I'll use it like once a week, but it's like a purple mask. So this is good because, number one, it 
helps keep my blonde and not that I'm really that blonde but um, number two it's a nice little like conditioning hair mask as well so okay so body wash kind of boring I just use the method men's body wash it's the sea and surf scent and I really like the scent that's why I got it and yeah it kinda smells like a guy but I like it and then for shaving cream I use this it's like thick and then it's not cream it's like a I don't know how to explain it but it's really good because um, it helps keep your legs really hydrated I feel like like I don't feel as dry after I shave with this so I like this okay so last thing I use in the shower is face wash I just use the hydrating CeraVe cleanser I feel like everyone uses this but it works really good so and my dermatologist recommended it so I use this and I always do use this I don't since my dermatologist recommended it to me I've not used anything different and I feel like it really works so okay so now for out of the shower I'm just gonna go ahead and say I use a lot of products for my face from the face reality line um, I'm not going to go through every single product because I feel like everyone's skin is different and even though you may have acne prone skin like me, um, this stuff could not work for you. So I recommend just reaching out to an esthetician or a dermatologist or someone who knows what they're talking about and can give you recommendations for your specific skin because I have been someone in the past who has like followed what influencers have said or said like an influencer would say like oh I have acne prone skin and this like changed my skin and I would try it and it wouldn't work for me and so I just recommend using what someone who's like licensed in skincare recommends to you as opposed to just you using what I use just because it works for me um, then for hair out of the shower because like I said I have a fine and kind of thin hair I try not to like rake on my hair too much with a brush so I use a detangler I switch this out literally every time I get a new one right now I'm using a kids detangler and it's toxin free sulfate paraben phthalate dye and synthetic fragrance free so I think that it's pretty good and it smells like coconut so yeah I really like it here's like the little thing that shows I don't know if this will focus alright that's not focusing um but that's a little thing that shows all the things that it doesn't have in it then I also use I got this in like my Sephora birthday gift, um, this little Moroccan oil, and I had never used a hair oil before, but this literally changed the game for how frizzy my hair is, and it makes my hair feel so soft, so I definitely will be getting some sort of hair oil after I finish this. I don't know if I'll get this exact one again, um, just because I want to try something new, and I think this is like really expensive, <laughs> um, so I'll probably try something different. But I would say hair oil kind of changes the game, so I use that. Um, and then, what else do I do when I get out of the shower? Oh, I use this on my lips before I go to bed, just the Laneige lip mask. I feel like everyone and their mother uses it. Um, and what else? I use this kind of toothpaste. We're just going through everything. Um, and I use a wet brush. I have like the big wet brush and I really like this too this helps not like rip my hair out as much and then I think that's pretty much it for what kind of stuff I use just do a quick rundown oh also I guess I use lotion usually and sometimes in the winter especially like maybe once a week I'll use this lotion with it came with like a mitt um, and it's a self tanner lotion and it's a little bit more like natural ingredients and I feel like it works really well so I'll use this occasionally very rarely um, and then this is just the lotion again I feel like I have already said this five million times but 
I switch out everything that I use pretty much every single time I get something different. So this is just the one I'm using right now. It's the Summer Fridays um, Summer Skin Nourishing Body Lotion. Um, and I like it. I like the smell of it. I've heard some people say it smells like Play-Doh, which I kind of would agree, but I also kind of oddly like it. Like, like the smell of Play-Doh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just what I'm using at the moment. I saw that they came out with it, and my sister had gotten me a Sephora gift card for my birthday, so I was like, you know what, I'll use the gift card to get that. So, those are kind of my nighttime products that I use. I don't know if that's interesting to you guys. I love seeing the things that other people use as well, because like I said, I like trying out new stuff all the time. So I get a lot of my ideas for new, like, shampoos, conditioners, that kind of stuff from other people's YouTube videos that I watch, so. Now is typically the point in my night where I will either finish up homework or I will um, study for a test if I have a test the next day. Or, in very rare cases, I will watch Netflix or TV or um, YouTube if I have the time or if I've gotten all my homework done. So, I thought before I watch a little TV, um, I would answer some of your guys' questions. We can make it a little chit-chat. And um, definitely let me know if you like doing more Q&A type things scattered throughout the vlog. I think that this is kind of like a fun little thing. And it um, allows me to connect with you guys a little bit more. So, first things first, um, I got my water. So, I'm going to take a little <laughs> sip of that. First question, what is your plan for work? I read that completely wrong. <laughs> What's your summer workout plan? So, um, I'm actually really excited. This is going to be a long answer, but I hope you guys bear with me here. I'm really excited for my workouts this summer because two reasons. Number one, First of all, I guess I should answer the question. My workout plan for the summer is similar to what I am doing right now. Um, I'm someone who really likes change. Like you guys probably saw with me telling you all the time that my hair products, body products, all that kind of stuff, I get something new every single time. I like trying new things. I like changing things up. And yeah, I'm not afraid to like change things. I actually really like change and I feel like I adapt very well to change. Um, but with that being said, when it comes to working out, I feel like I get bored of stuff very easily and I am constantly changing up my workout schedule and my workout plan um, because I get tired of the current plan that I'm on very easily. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just have to learn to adapt and um, like keep myself, like keep pushing myself. But um, yeah, as far as right now, I plan on keeping the same workout schedule that I have right now um i did switch that from what i was doing in the fall and in the winter because now i can go outside a little bit more so i run three or four days a week depending on my weekends are a lot of times very scattered and i do a bunch of different things on the weekends and i go visit a bunch of people i'm constantly doing something different so a lot of times that fourth run which is supposed to be on a saturday i won't end up doing i'll end up doing something different I try and do something active and um, do some sort of workout Monday through Saturday, but I typically do a longer distance run um, on Monday and then I will walk for like 45-ish minutes after that um, and that will be it because Mondays I have school really late and so um, just getting myself to do anything besides run and walk is just kind of asking a lot. I'm so like mentally exhausted by the time I get home that like trying to do something super intense just really doesn't appeal to me. Um, and then Tuesdays I go to CrossFit. Um, so I plan to continue to do that, do two days a week CrossFit, um, or potentially do three days a week CrossFit. I'm not sure yet because I'm not exactly sure exactly like what my schedule is for school yet but um yeah Tuesdays I go to CrossFit and then I'll usually do a walk in the afternoon because I go to CrossFit in the mornings um probably a shorter walk like a mile walk or a mile and a half or something 
um, in the afternoons on Tuesday. And then Wednesdays, I will do sprints and then I'll do some sort of like body weight workout. So I'll do something with either just a very light dumbbells or just purely like a body weight circuit. And um, sprints, I'll either do like some sort of fart leg run through the Nike Run Club app because I have the Nike Run Club or the Nike, I guess I just should say, Apple Watch. And so I will do either a fart leg or inter interval run through that app, or I'll just do my own sprints and like go to a field or do them on a treadmill or something like that. Um, and then do the body weight circuit. Thursdays, I'll do another longer run. And um, like I said, my longer runs are like two and a half miles, three miles. They're not like long runs in runner's terms, um, but I'll do a longer run and then I will do a yoga or Pilates workout just in my apartment on YouTube. I'll just find one that I think looks interesting. And then Fridays I go to CrossFit again. Fridays are typically the hardest day of the week for CrossFit. So I try to always make it on Friday. Um, and if I go visit someone, family, read, whatever, I will try to do the workout. I, they have an app at my gym, and so I'll try to do the workout at a gym wherever I am. And then Saturdays, I try to do another longer distance run, and I'll either do a yoga or a stretch or walk again after the run. And like I said, a lot of times Saturdays, I don't do that run. I'll end up doing, like this last Saturday, I went for a walk, I went and played tennis, and I did like a little hit circuit. So I kind of just make do with where I am and what is available to me. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's the most realistic way I can work out is to just be adaptable to whatever environment I'm in and just accept that like not every workout's gonna be like the hardest workout I've ever done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna tell you guys why I'm really excited for the summer because I am not going to be taking any MBA classes. So for those of you who don't know, I'm currently getting a doctorate in physical therapy and a master's in business. And so um, every semester I have both physical therapy classes and um, MBA classes. But because I started my MBA early, I don't have any MBA classes for this summer term. So I'm only taking the physical therapy classes, which is going to be like I feel like it's going to be like a huge weight off my shoulders because even though I'm only taking like two MBA classes at a time, it does add a decent amount of work considering how much the physical therapy program is. Like physical therapy is a lot of work for school and um, so just adding anything on top of that feels kind of overwhelming. So I'm really excited because I'm not going to have any MBA classes and our summer terms are a little bit lighter load, actually a lot of it lighter load than our spring and fall terms. So I'm really excited because I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit more time on my hands. So anyway, long story short, that was way too long of an answer. That is what I'm gonna be doing this summer for workouts. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess you guys will see as I move along. I may switch that up between now in summer, who knows? Okay, second question, and I guess we'll just end it at this one because I uh, took so long answering that first question. Um, tips for longer distance relationships or longer term long distance relationships. So my first tip um, is to kind of talk about like what you like in relationships, what makes you feel valued, what makes you feel um, like loved in your relationship from the get-go um, and kind of set some expectations going into the long distance. That's what Reed and I did for the second like time whenever I moved here. Um, and I feel like that helped a little bit because I know where he's coming from and I know more of what he's thinking and um, vice versa, he knows a little bit more of what I'm thinking and um, the things that I need out of the relationship. And so if you have a partner who's willing to like kind of make themselves a little uncomfortable to talk about that kind of stuff because sometimes it's not super comfortable, especially if like you've been, you know, like around each other. Like Reed and I lived basically right next door to each other 
for the whole first part of our relationship and so we never really had to talk about tough stuff like that or talk about what we needed or what we wanted in the relationship because we were just around each other all the time. Second tip I would say is if you are in a close enough distance to see each other so like for me five hours is a doable thing like I can drive that easily in a day um, make the effort to see each other as much as possible. Third tip I would say would be um, to either call or talk on the phone. Um, call or talk, that means the same thing. I meant to say call or FaceTime each other on the phone um, because just getting to hear that person's voice and um, getting to actually have a real conversation with them and not just texting them, I feel like makes a big difference. So those would be my tips for long distance relationships. Obviously, every relationship is different, and so I think the biggest thing is just communication and, like I said, talking to each other about what you need and want out of the relationship. Um, but just communicating and continuing to communicate. And I'm no expert, but I have done long distance, so I feel like those are the things that have worked for me. So now I'm gonna watch some TV, I'm gonna chillax, and I will talk to you guys in a little bit catch you guys back up whenever I'm done watching TV. So to finish off the night, I am going to write in my five minute journal. I do this every morning and night and um, then I'm going to read. I'm really tired so who knows how long I'm going to end up reading for. But I'm going to do this and then read. Yeah. How's that for a pickup line? Every time I see you get a feeling like I'm so high. Tell me, am I dreaming? How the hell?